Hi, Nirvan. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good, Nirvan. Very good. It has been a great pleasure teaching you mathematics. You know quite a bit of pre-algebra and you have also started working on linear equations. Tell me something about your journey. Uh, in this summer, I was studying some pre-algebra, so I, I thought I could be doing this. Perfect. So, to get to linear equations, what all concepts you think you should know? I should know the basics of ordered operation mm -hmm. and how to deal with variables too, sometimes. Yes, because when we say algebra, we are always dealing with variables. So today we'll take up level one algebraic equations, simple, which you can actually solve by estimating. But what we'll also understand, how do we estimate and get the answers in different ways? Perfect, Nirvan. So I'll share with you a set of 20 questions, and then we will see how do we estimate answers of these simple linear equations. So let me share with you the screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Right. So this is our first practice session. As you know, practice makes you perfect. So we'll try to solve questions. Now here, we will estimate solution. Variables will be on one side of the equation. We'll perform basic operations, and that's going to help build foundation. Fractions could also be answer of some of these questions, and some questions could be a bit challenging. So let's begin with this set of 20 questions. Here are the first four questions for you. So can you tell me how will you estimate the solution of these questions one by one? The very first one is 2x equals to 14. So what is x equals to? So I know 2x means 2 times x. Right. So x is like what? So if you think 2 times what equals 14, I know 2 times 7 is 14, so my estimate is 7. So basically, we are saying 2 times what is 14, right? And we know 2 times 7 is 14, right? And therefore, the unknown value of x should be equal to 7 for this equation to be true, right? So we'll write x equals to seven, perfect. Next one, three x equals to 12. So I, if I think in my head three times what is 12, three times four is 12, so x is four. So x is equals to four, since three times four is 12. Now, nine x equals to nine. Mm, I know that, um, Nine times one is nine, so I think x is one. Right. So if you multiply any number with one, you get the same number. Yeah. Nine times one should be nine, right? So seven x equals to zero. So it's just asking seven times what is zero. Yeah. Anything times zero is zero, so then x is zero. Perfect. So with this example, we have learned that one is multiplication identity. Correct? Yeah. And also we have learned zero times anything is zero. Correct? So these are important learnings as we move forward. Perfect? So let's take up the next set of questions now. So now we have fractions, right? So yeah. half of x is equal to 5. What do you think x is equal to? Mm, so for this, yeah. Mm, OK. I would If I multiply 2 from both sides, the denominator would get canceled, right? Right. So what you're trying to say is that you have half of x equals to 5, right? So you're going to multiply by 2 on both the sides. That is kind of a reverse operation, right? So you multiply by 2 on both sides, right? So I'm writing this dot here so that there is no confusion between x. 
So this two can cancel. And so, so the multiplication. Dot means multiple. So x equals to 10. This is one way of doing it, correct? So can you tell me another way to estimate this answer? Half of x is 5. So you can think half of what is 5. You can also think like that. You so can half think... of what is 5, correct? Yeah. So half of 10 is 5. So we know half 10 divided by 2 is 5. Of 10 is 5. And therefore, x should be equal to 10. Is that clear, right? So we are going to use this strategy. So there are two ways we could do it. You could multiply 2 and 5 to get the answer or think as if half of what number is 5, correct? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So now let's answer. One third of x is 3. So what is x equals to? So I know for a third there are three parts. Hmm. So it's Three, that's one part. So if you if there are three more parts, then there would be nine in total. So x would be nine. So x is equal to nine. So you could get it as Nirvana is saying by multiplying three with three, that gives you nine, or one third of nine is three, correct? Very good. Now one seventh of x is zero. What should be x? It should be zero because anything times zero is zero. Perfect. Now, here's a slightly difficult question. 3 by 2 of x is equal to 6. How will you find the value of x, Nirvan? So this time it's harder because um, the numerator is over 1. Yeah. So what I would do, I would do the operation. Yeah. Multiply 2 from both sides. So you'll multiply with 2 on both sides. Then what happens? Then you cross the denominator. Yeah, so you get 3x equals to 6x. Yeah, and that's 3x, which is 12, right? Yeah. And then 3x equals 12. 3 times what is 12? X Correct. Is 12. So 3 times what is 12? 3 times 4 is 12. Therefore, x is 4. Makes sense? Correct? Yeah, maybe if you know how to multiply by yeah. fraction, you can test it out. So Correct. Correct. So what Nirvan is saying now, that you can check your result, right? So 3 by 2, let me change this thing, right? So we have 3 by 2 of x, which is 4, right? So times 4 is what? Let's calculate. So 3 times 4 is 12, and divided by 2 gives us 6. So we get the correct answer, right? So that is how we are going to do it. So can you summarize, Nirvan, in this particular page, when we were working with fractions, how did you estimate the value of x? So if you think of x, you have to think that x is what? So what, for example, um, 9x equals to 27. So 9 times what is this 27? Is correct. And for fractions, we learned how you can find the answers by them, like half x equals 5. That half what um half of what is five? So half Correct. of ten is five. You could solve it like that. Perfect. So let's move on and take up next four questions now. Perfect. So let's see how do we solve these questions. Okay. Wait, so just okay. can you read and estimate the answer? So again. Our focus today will be on estimating the solution, okay? So 3 plus x is 17. What should be x? Mm, so you think, uh, again, 3 plus what is 17? Imagine it's a blank. 3 plus um, dash or blank equals a 17. Yeah. So usually, like maybe in grade 1 or grade 2, you've done this before. You can do it the same way, like you subtract 17 and 3, so it would be 15. That's my estimate. 14, right? So, 15. You oh, yeah, 14. And 17 and 3, when you subtract, you get 14, right? So, you will estimate that x should be 14, right? Because if I add 3 to 14, I'll get 17, right? So, that is how we have to work on such questions, correct? 
So we'll write x as equal to 14, right? 3 plus 14 is 17. Next one, x minus 5 is 12. What should be x? Mm, so you, you have to think what minus 5 is 12? Correct. Dash minus 5 is 12. So you would do the same way, but the opposite way. You would think what is 12 plus 5 is 14? Well, that would be 17. Seven, and you can check 17 minus 5 is 12. Be Perfect. So, so what Nirvan is saying is solve and check. So this is a good idea. Perfect. Question number 11. X minus 4 is 9. What is the value of X? X is 13 because 13 minus 4 is 9. Correct. So you can check 13 minus 4 is 9, right? Yeah. Makes sense. 7 plus X is 15. What should be X? 7 plus blank equals 15. So blank equal or blank or X equals to 8. So X is equal to 8. So we have discussed a couple of ways of finding a solution when we are given equations in this form. Correct? You could add or subtract. Reverse operation is what we are doing here, right? So let me make a note here. What we did here basically is reverse operation, right? Three plus X, when you add something to X, which is three, you get 17. So subtract three from 17 to get the answer. That was the whole idea, right? So that's great, Nirvan. So we'll move on and take up the Next set of questions, right? Remember, we are going for 20 questions this time. So Nirvan, here is slightly challenging set of questions for you. The question is 2x plus 1 equals to 13. How will you answer this question? Mm, so you can think of it like this. You could do a reverse operation. You could subtract one from both sides. Okay. And get rid of that one over there. Oh, I get you. So basically, so we have 2x plus 1 equals to 13. You get rid of this one by subtracting one from each side. So you get 2x equals to 13 minus 1, which is 12. Right? So basically, what you're saying is we could rewrite this as 2x equals to 13 minus 1, taking one from each side, which is equal to 12. And now it is similar to the earlier questions, right? So this set has one additional step in between. Perfect. Now tell me, what is the value of x? Okay. Um, okay. 14. 3x minus 5 equals to 22. No, no. This, first we finish the first one, right? So x is equal to 12 divided oh, by yeah. uh -huh. 6. Next one, 3x minus 5 is 22. Yes, tell me. How do how will you do? So we'll do reverse operation, right? Yep, you add by five. So three x equals to twenty two plus five, which is twenty seven. It's just basically the same question. Three x equals to twenty seven divided by three or over three. Yeah. Nine. Perfect. Question number fifteen. Five x minus four equals to eleven. How will you do this one? So you can think of it again like a blank, like 5x yeah. is a blank. Yeah. So you can think that um, 11 plus 4 equals to 5x. So 5x equals to 11 plus 4, right, which is 15, correct? Yeah. So x is equal to what? x is equal to 3 because 15 divided by 5 is 3. Correct. Next question, 7 plus 2x is 11. What will you do here? You can do it. You can do the same thing again, reverse operation. So then, yeah, you minus seven. Yeah, two x equals to eleven minus seven. Yeah, which is four. Yes, and then x equals to four divided by two, which is two. Perfect. So that is how we will do this. So this page. We have solved using reverse operation, right? So if it is addition on one side, then we subtract on the other side, and then we get it. Perfect. Let's move yeah. on to the next set of questions, right?
So these are the last four questions for us to solve today in this particular video. Nirvan, more like we are having fractions, so it is slightly more difficult, right? So follow steps and take us through your steps of thinking and then tell me, how will you answer this question number 17? So you can think three plus blank equals to seven. Three plus four is seven, you know that, right? Three plus now, blank equals to seven. So we know three plus four equals to seven. That so means seven. half of X is four, right? Yeah. And now what is X? You can multiply four and two to get eight because half of H is four. So we get X equal to eight. That was great thinking, Nirvan. Next one, one third of X minus five is two. How will you do this? Okay, so this time I'm gonna do it differently. Yeah. Multiply three in both sides. Multiply by three in both sides. So what do you get? So we do uh, times with common denominator. So common denominator, we also call it LCM, is three here, right? So we'll multiply every term by three, right? Even that five, right? So we yeah. this three gets canceled, so we get x minus fifteen equals to six. Yeah. Then. Then, blank minus fifteen is six. Mm. You have to figure out six plus fifteen. Six plus fifteen. Twenty-one. So we get 21, right? So this is a slightly more complicated. What you could have preferred, Nirvan, can you suggest? You could have taken five on the right side and then do it, right? Yeah. So let's call it alternate method. So alternately, we could have done one third of X equals to two plus five, right? Which is seven, right? And then multiplying by three, so seven times three, equals to 21, we could have got our answer, right? Yeah. Perfect. Question number 19. How will you do question number 19? Tell me. So this time it's difficult to solve because the numerator is over one. Yeah. You, you can multiply three from both sides again. So one by one we'll do it. First we are multiplying by the denominator, which is three. So this three cancels. So we get two X equals to eight times three, which is how much? 24. So what is x equals to now? x equals to 24 divided by 2, which is 12. So half of 24, which is 12. Perfect. Next one. Question 20. The last question. Uh, 3 half, 3 half x equals to 12. Mm -hmm. So you multiply 2 from both sides again. The denominator will get cancelled, so you're left with 3x and continue equal to 12 times 2, 24. X, X. Is 24 divided by 3, which is 8. So the answer is 8, right? So that is how we could solve these questions. These were simple linear equations where initially we could estimate very easily. Then the next half, eight questions was slightly difficult. We had to do one operation in addition to get the answer, right? So from here, I think we have very good foundation. We can jump into slightly more difficult equations to solve, which we are going to take set of 20 in the next video. Perfect, Nirvan? Yes. Okay, so with that, we come to an end of today's session of solving simple linear equations. Nirvan, can you summarize, how did you solve these 20 questions? I used different methods, like alternate method and using what I know. Right. So can you elaborate on the methods which you used? So sometimes um, you can bring the number to the other side and change the form from positive or negative. Yeah. Or you could multiply from both sides to get rid of the fraction, to get rid of the denominator. Right. And find the answer. Correct. And you can think like um, three times what is 27. Correct. You think yeah, that helps. So variable x is something which is unknown. So we can always question ourselves three times what. So then that should give you the answer. 
Very good, Nivon. It was a pleasure solving these questions with you. See you in the next session. And I hope most of my subscribers will love this particular video and subscribe to Learnings. Thank you and all the best, Nirvan. Bye. Bye.